I printed this stool on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max over a year ago, and it's the biggest thing I've ever 3D printed. Even if I wanted to go bigger, I couldn't. The bed size of the Neptune 3 and 4 Max are 400 by 400 millimeters, meaning this stool is the biggest I could go. Until now. Earlier this week, these massive boxes arrived on a pallet in front of my house. Inside are all the parts I need to make one of the biggest consumer 3D printers available on the market. The Elegoo Orange Storm Giga. Today we're going to get this thing assembled and go over all the specs and features. Of course, I have to get this inside and hopefully find a spot for it in my tiny spare bedroom workshop. Assembly is actually pretty easy as this thing comes mostly pre-assembled. There's the base, two Z-axis side parts, two struts for the top, and then the main XY gantry that gets bolted onto the Z-axis brackets on either side. One thing I was very happy to see was the massive hot end on this thing. From the promo pictures I saw, I was worried we would end up with the same print head as the Neptune 4 series of machines. But this one's much larger with an elongated ceramic hot end. This should be more than enough to pump out a good volumetric flow rate and keep up with fast printing and larger nozzle sizes. Let's go over some of the features and now that we have this assembled. First off, the build volume is a staggering 800 millimeters by 800 millimeters on the X and Y and 1000 millimeters or one meter on the Z. For kinematics, it's not core XY, meaning the axes are pulled independently with a motor on the X and the Y. With a machine of this size, that choice makes sense as the limiting factor for speed isn't going to be the kinematics, but instead the weight of the gantry. There's linear rails on the X and Y, which is my preferred bearing style as they're super rigid and easy to maintain. On the Z axis, there are four of these massive smooth rods and some big chunky lead screws. The bed consists of four quadrants. Each one is 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters. They can also be heated independently. Each one uses the same removable bed as the Neptune Max series of machines. With big machines means big power. So each of these beds has its own power supply. In total, the printer has five power supplies, one for each bed and one for the main board and hot end. There's also a safety breaker here on the back to ensure power is cut should anything go wrong. There's an auto bed leveling sensor and an accelerometer for resonance compensation built into the print head. The main board is running Clipper and has both Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity. There's also this massive touchscreen tablet with tons of information and settings to adjust. Let's run the auto calibrate wizard. This will tune for resonance, adjust the hot end PID, and create a bed mesh for leveling. Now that that's done, we can do some test prints and see what we're working with here. The classic Benchy boat is made for a machine with a nozzle size of 0.4 millimeters. So since I immediately put the one millimeter nozzle on this hot end, I'm gonna scale this model up to 250%. Here we can see some under extrusion, some gaps, and a lot of stringing. 
So I'll run both the flow rate test and retraction test in Orca Slicer to fine tune things. After a few tests and some tweaks, I was able to pull off this Benchy boat with a print time of one and a half hours. It's still not perfect, but we're looking pretty good for a chunky one millimeter nozzle. Of course, the elephant in the room here is going to be leveling this bed. Even after mesh bed leveling, I'm still getting some inconsistencies between each build plate. But I have an old school trick up my sleeve to deal with this. I printed this adapter for a runout gauge, and this will get bolted directly to the print head, and I can zero it out and make sure each section of the bed is at the perfect height. Elegu sent along these uncoated steel beds with holes where the adjustable bed screws are. So I just need to manually move the print head over each screw and adjust it accordingly. This is a trick I picked up back in the dark ages of 3D printing when auto bed leveling sensors were uncommon. Once everything was adjusted, I ran another bed leveling mesh. Then I printed a few layers to make sure everything was lined up good. Now that everything is mostly dialed in, we can get our first big print going. For this, I designed a slurm sign. I used a color swap to achieve the two color design, and while not perfect, this thing is awesome and took only five hours to print. Super happy with how this turned out, and I can't wait to get some more huge prints going on this thing. This is such a cool printer with so much potential, and the fact that Elegoo was able to hit a price point of 2,500 US dollars is mind blowing. That's all for today, but stay tuned to the channel for more Giga content. I can assure you that this will become my new hyperfixation and I'll be printing some awesome things on it. Special thanks to Elegoo for sending this machine for me to take a look at. If you want to learn more or pre-order this printer, I'll leave a link in the description. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.